Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about a debilitating autoimmune disorder that affects millions of people in the whole world, Sjogren syndrome. Sjogren syndrome is a condition that causes dryness in the eyes, in the mouth, but also in other parts of the body. And it can also lead to fatigue, joint pain, and will increase your risk to develop lung disease and lymphoma. But did you know that incorporating the right vitamins into your diet can help you alleviate some of the symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome? In this video, we will discuss about the best vitamins for Sjogren's syndrome, where can you find them in your food, or if you need to use supplementation, how much you should take. RheumatologistOnCall.com So let's dive into the first vitamin, vitamin D. Vitamin D is also known as the sunshine vitamin, and it is crucial for people with Sjogren's syndrome as it will regulate the immune system and it will reduce inflammation. In my previous video about the role of vitamin D in rheumatoid arthritis, that is another autoimmune disease. I have explained to you what vitamin D is and why is it critical in regulating the immune system cells. Actually, your immune system cells have receptors for vitamin D. If vitamin D is deficient, it was shown that will increase the risk for developing autoimmune diseases by 22%. This was just published in a very large study called the VITAL study. You can learn more about this study in this video in my channel. In our days, with limited exposure to sunlight, even normal people are deficient in vitamin D. However, when it comes to patients with Sjogren's syndrome, vitamin D deficiency has to be avoided. There are studies that show that low levels of vitamin D can be involved in increasing the risk for you to develop Sjogren's syndrome. Other studies found that low levels of vitamin D in patients with Sjogren are associated with worsening in the symptoms like neuropathy and even an increased risk to develop lymphoma. What do you need to do? You should ask your doctor to check your vitamin D level at least once a year. And if they are low, definitely you need to supplement it. If vitamin D level is in the normal range, you can still consider to take a supplement, but you should always talk to your doctor and make sure you do not take too much as this can be extremely dangerous. I know that there are protocols out there on the internet that will suggest you to use very high doses of vitamin D, from 10,000 units to 30,000 units per day. But unfortunately, there is not enough scientific data to support this, and it may be very dangerous. The recommended daily dose of vitamin D is 1,000 to 2,000 international units per day, but again, always consult with your physician before starting to take a supplement. Now let's talk about omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, which are mostly found in fish oil, are supplements that can decrease inflammation. Sjogren's syndrome is a disease where inflammation is the cause of the symptoms. One of the key symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome is dry mouth and dry eyes. There are studies that show that fish oil can help improve these symptoms. Especially when it comes to dry eyes, let me give you an example. This is a study published in 2013 that found that patients with Sjogren's syndrome that took fish oil supplements had improved symptoms of dry eyes. They had 264 patients with dry eyes that were randomized to receive one capsule of 500 milligrams two times a day containing EPA and DHA for three months, and they compared that to placebo. Interestingly, after three months, 65% of patients that took the supplementation showed an improvement in dry eyes. 
Now, when it comes to dry mouse, omega-3 fatty acid supplementation showed mixed results, with some studies reporting that the use of these supplements helped, while others showed that it did not help stimulate the saliva flow. Now, you may still try to use the supplements for about three to six months, and if you have the improvement with no side effects, you may continue. If you do not see any improvement in six months, then stop using these supplements. But always communicate with your rheumatologist and share with them your plan. I do encourage my patients to increase the intake of omega-3 fatty acids through their diet. You may find omega-3 fatty acids in fatty fish like salmon, sardines, and mackerel, but you can also find it in flax seeds or chia seeds. You should try to eat fish at least two to three times per week. Vitamin B. Vitamin B complex is a group of essential vitamins for maintaining healthy skin and mucous membranes and also supporting the nervous system and reducing stress levels. As many patients with Sjogren might have gut inflammation and they have a lot of gastrointestinal complaints like bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain, the absorption of many of these vitamins can be impaired. For example, vitamin B12 deficiency was found in some patients with Sjogren's syndrome and that caused pernicious anemia. So that's why it's important to make sure you check the levels of vitamin B and including vitamin B12. If you are deficient, supplementing with a B complex vitamin can help you with your energy level and with your fatigue. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is also important for people with Sjogren's syndrome. Vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant that will boost your immune system and will reduce inflammation. It is also important for maintaining healthy skin and mucous membranes. In patients with Sjogren, it was found that certain molecules involved in mediating inflammation, like prostaglandin 1, can be decreased. Now, vitamin C helps to increase the biosynthesis of these molecules that decrease inflammation. An animal study found that vitamin C supplementation improved the synthesis of prostaglandin 1 and also the symptoms of Sjogren's, like dryness in the mouth and dryness in the eyes. Vitamin C can be also found in a variety of fruits and vegetables but sometimes eating too many oranges or drinking too much water with lime can cause burning in your mouth. So adding a supplement might be an option for some patients. The recommended daily dose of vitamin C is between 500 and 1000 milligrams per day. Now foods high in vitamin C that I encourage you to include in your diet are strawberries, bananas, apples, but also vegetables like tomatoes or broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and cauliflower. Vitamin E. Last but not least, we have vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant that helps protect cells from free radicals. Now, vitamin E deficiency is rare in the United States. When it comes to vitamin E role in patients with Sjogren's syndrome, there have been limited studies on the effect of this vitamin on disease symptoms. One study found that low levels of vitamin A, D, and E can impact the immune system cells, like natural killer cells, in patients with Sjogren. And in those patients, it seems that they were having worsening in their symptoms with low vitamin levels. You may increase the intake of foods that are high in vitamin E, like sunflower seeds, peanuts, almonds, pumpkin, avocado, and asparagus. Vitamin E oil may also be helpful in treating dry mouth and sores inside the mouth. 
If you have sores in your mouth, you should always call and discuss about that with your rheumatologist. In conclusion, incorporating the right vitamins into your diet can help alleviate some of the symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome, but it's important to always remain in contact with your rheumatologist that can test you for your levels of your vitamins and can make appropriate changes. You can always supplement the foods that are high in these vitamins into your meal plan, and that will be very helpful. If you or someone you know is living with Sjogren's, remember that you are not alone and there is always help available. Now, what vitamins did you try? Which one was helpful to you? I want you to please share your experience with other people with Sjogren as we are all here to learn and support each other. Don't hesitate to reach out for the care and support that you need. My company, Rheumatologist on Call, is able to see patients in many U.S. states and helps patients when they need it the most, breaking geographical barriers. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information very helpful to you. And for more information on Sjogren's syndrome and other autoimmune diseases, be sure to subscribe to my channel because here you will find a lot of information that is useful to you. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Have a wonderful day. Rheumatologistoncall.com